Hi, and welcome to section 8, Creating Real-Time Applications. We will see how to create and build real-time applications in Node.js. In this section we will use socket.io Node.js library to work with WebSockets and perform bidirectional communication. We will dive into server send events and look into server-to-server -server communication with UDP. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with bidirectional communication with Socket.io. Socket.io is a library for using WebSockets in Node. In this video we are going to take a look at what WebSockets are and how to use them in Node. We will see how to establish a bidirectional communication between a server and a client. WebSocket is a computer communication protocol. It's a complex protocol that was standardized in 2011 by the W3C. It provides a full duplex communication channel over a single TCP channel. With a WebSocket, you can send a message from a server to a client. You can also send a message from a client to a server. On the Mozilla Developer Network, you'll find more information about the WebSocket API. In Node.js, it's also possible to use WebSockets. Socket.io is the most famous framework to deal with WebSockets. It's a framework to create a real-time application in Node.js. So, let us take a look how to create a real-time application in Node.js with Socket.io. First of all, we need to install Socket.io into our project. You do this with npm i socket io We also need to install Express because we are going to serve HTML pages through Express. First of all, we need to create our server.js file. On top of the page, we need to instantiate our express application. Then we need to declare our server variable. Now we can start with a specific socket IO code. First of all, we declare an IO variable where we require socket.io and we pass the server variable to it. The IO variable has a lot of events that it can listen to and one of them is connection. This is fired when it establishes a connection. So we have here io.on and then connection and then the callback. This callback has a socket into it. So every time we have a connection, we get a socket variable back. And that's our bidirectional socket that's being created here. And of course, we also need to listen to a, a port. Now we can emit an event. So let's do that. Socket.emit 
an event with some data. You get my point right? This way it's very easy to send some data to the client with socket.init. We also need to serve an HTML page. So now we can use Express for that. We do that with app.get like we saw before. And then with our response, we send the file, in our case, index.html. Now we need to create our index.html page. Here we go. And then we copy paste the following code into it. It has an editable section. And that's it. So in the body, we add following code to connect our clients to our server. Then we create a variable socket that will be equal to IO. Notice that we are not specifying an URL. When we call IO, it tries by default to connect to the host that serves the page. Next, we're going to add a method that reacts upon changes of our editable content. These changes are key up, paste, copy, cut, delete. Content editable attribute is an HTML5 attribute. So it's not available on every browser. Keep that in mind. And now we need to declare a diff. Where we grab our editable content diff. And then we will use our method set change listener. We will pass as a first element the diff, and as a second element, we will have our callback. So every time the content editable will change, it will come here in this set change listener event and here we can send a message to the server with socket with emit content change and then we pass the inner html of our editable diff Now on the server, we need to listen to that event, right? So, here we just pass console log. We say that the user is connected. And then on our socket, we can listen to content change. That's the same name that we declared in our client. Then we have a callback function. It contains the message.
And then we're going to print out this message to the console. Now we can start our server to see the results. So this is our result. Now when I change something here, you see it sends an event with a new content over here. Now we want to update the other browsers when somebody updates the content. So let's update our code and emit the content to the rest of the users. But socket.broadcast.emit will send the message to all the other sockets that are listening. Now on our client, we need to listen to this event. When we got a ch content change message, we set the content of our editable diff to the value of our message. We do this as follow. Socket.on, then content change. And then we need to set our div inner HTML to message. So we start our server. Now we opened two windows. And in the one window, we can change something and you will see that it reflects on the other window. So let's change three items into last item. That's great, right? We created our own collaborative editable document. In this video, you learned how to use WebSockets with Socket.io in Node.js.